Hi guys and welcome to the Underworld Podcast where every week we take you into a crazy and wonderful story from the world of organised crime. I'm your host Sean Williams, uh, I'm coming to you from Berlin and I'm joined uh, amazingly by my co-host Danny Gold. Yeah, yeah guys, I'm, I'm in Ukraine so I haven't really been available the past couple of weeks and very sorry about that. I will never leave you alone with Sean again for this long <laughs> in the future. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I think this is a pretty great episode. Sean, you've been on the road a ton recently too, yeah? Yeah, I've been all over. I was in Belize, the States, all over Germany doing some crazy story about Vladimir Putin and now France. That was something different. But um, yeah, yeah, more stuff about, more about that soon. But where are Ukraine, are you right now? Yeah, so I'm in, I'm in Kharkiv right now, which is in northeast Ukraine, close to the border with Russia. It's the second biggest city, and it had been under pretty intense shelling since the beginning of the war. In recent days, they've, um, they've really pushed the Russian army back, some units like all the way back to the border, so they're having some great advances. I was able to get out to some of them recently, I think yesterday or two, so be on the lookout for that, and we'll probably do... Maybe a bonus episode getting more into the details of this stuff. But I had a big story in Rolling Stone last week about these guys that um, deliver aid to the front line. Yeah, One of them crazy. sells a hangover remedy drink. It's a, <laughs> it's a good time. But uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I've, uh, I've, I've kind of slacked on the episodes. I will make that up to you guys. But Sean's got, got a really interesting one coming right here, yeah? Yeah. So uh, folks might know, but I was in Catania, Sicily in uh, Italy a couple of months ago now, uh, doing a story for Sports Illustrated about a rugby club that's kind of standing up to the mafia out there, doing some great work, uh, really interesting guys. It was a wonderful trip. So they've turned it into a little mini documentary. Uh, we thought we'd uh, sort of publish it here and, and learn a bit more about what Danny's up to at the same time. Uh, what are your plans? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I've been here about two and a half, three weeks, and uh, I'm going to stay in Kharkiv a couple more days. We're working on a couple things. And then I'm going to try to go, I think, to the south, to Odessa and Mykolaiv. Um, maybe spend some time in Kiev a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, I should be back around in, uh, in two weeks. and We can get back to some regularly scheduled episodes and, and keep things moving with, with all, the, uh, all the stories that you know and love or don't know, <laughs> but will love and everything like that. Oh, yeah. So who have you been spending like most of your time out? like out there with you were with a bunch of the volunteers right um like out in the east somewhere yeah i was with the volunteer group they were more like uh volunteers that that don't fight they just kind of you know the guy sources the stuff delivers gets vests uh, like, like okay. body armor um thermal optics are big here drones from all over the world and drives them to his friends on the front and gives it to cool. them he's a bit older so he can't really fight and uh the other day i was with the ukrainian forces um, I think it's a mixture of the Territorial Defense Force and a uh, Ukrainian National Guard in this area here that was, I posted some photos actually on, on, on Twitter, if you guys go look, maybe I'll put them on the Underworld Instagram account. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so I was with those guys for a bit and we're trying to work something out with them, maybe spend a couple nights with them and, and, and really see what's going on because it's been, uh, it's, it's crazy, man. I mean, they were like setting up their, their sleeping areas in like the wooded area, the forest. You know, they're in Russian trenches that they cleared out a couple of days ago. Now they've taken them over. There's like burned, rusted out tanks everywhere. And you can hear just artillery thumping maybe like a mile away. So it, it's not what you okay. would, I don't know. I mean, the, the definition of the front is, is loose, right? But it's, um, yeah. I was actually kind of concerned. They're super relaxed. And I'm like, are you sure we're okay just to be out here relatively <laughs> close to the open? And because we were on higher terrain, and the uh, the Russian forces were quite busy with the uh, the more advanced parts of their unit. They were pretty uh, pretty chill about it, but I was not. And I don't like walking in those areas too when they've recently been cleared. I'm just terrified of like IEDs and mines, especially after working in Syria and Iraq. So that's always that's always fun. And I've I've started smoking again, so that's going well. Oh, that's a sign that everything's going yeah. really really well. Um, so like, how are you getting around there? Yeah, man. It's, uh, I mean, some people have rented cars, but there's, there's some fuel problems. I actually, you can take the overnight train from Kiev to Kharkiv, which is crazy because Kharkiv is still being shelled, you know? And uh, the, train, the trains are amazing here, but I've unfortunately really started traveling a lot like overnight. So I've been taking night trains quite a bit, which, you know, I thought uh, awesome. would be something that I wouldn't have to do a lot in life after I was like 25, but here I am. And uh, yeah. It's uh, it, but yeah, you no know, car cars like 
driving up and we had to walk at the last place we were at because it was pretty heavy and I, I didn't want to take a civilian car, like a soft car, um, over to where we were. So we kind of parked at one point and, uh, you know, they told us it was fine and they made us put these, this camouflage netting over the car, which kind of means it's not fine, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's kind of how we did. It. And we kind of walked up to where they were and everything like that. But yeah, it's, uh, it, it's been tough access. I think for a lot of journalists has been really tough to really get where things are happening. Um, Unfortunately, like a number were killed in the early weeks, a couple that, that I think um, we knew. And, uh, and, you know, they've always been pretty, pretty strict with, uh, with access. And I think it's, it's unfortunately, you know, they're, they're, it, it's a necessity. They're doing it because they don't want reporters getting killed. And it's a, it's a brutal war. You know, it's not like covering some other wars where, it, you know, this is artillery and artillery, right? It's, it's, uh, it's heavy duty stuff. And it's, uh, it's it's pretty grinding, you know, and you can see it on these guys' faces when you're out there. It's not um, this isn't like raids and 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 small arms fire, right? It's like heavy heavy duty stuff. But the guys I was with seem their their morale is super high, man. They uh they they're claiming you know they've pushed the Russians essentially to the border in the north the northeast area from where we were, and they think they can do it where we were in the north and northwest within the week, which is cool. Might be a little a little bit um presumptuous but they they've really yeah. you know these lines that were held for for weeks and weeks and weeks almost months and they broke them recently so they're they're feeling quite good about things and i know they're getting new equipment every day so you know hopefully that uh they they wrap it up soon yeah definitely and i was lucky enough to read a draft of yours the story that's coming out pretty soon do you want to tell us a little bit uh about that if you can yeah it's being edited right now probably it's just a crazy story of a family that um, the woman was a doctor. Uh, her husband was a former police officer, and they were in an occupied area for for five weeks. And she was basically the only doctor treating this village. And everyone was coming to her house, and she was treating them. And the Russians took the three of them and tortured them. They let her go. They took the husband and son first to Belarus to a filtration camp. Then they took the husband to prison a prison in russia which is what they've been doing they've been taking ukrainians to, to actual prisons in russia um he was freed a month later uh in a prisoner exchange the son is still missing and the husband is like um he was an afghan war vet so he he, he was in the soviet military like commando style 82 to 84 in afghanistan he's tough as nails you know yeah. so if anyone can 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 survive this situation it's him and he wasn't even you know he was like it was you know he, he dealt with it he, he almost was he had some very bad things happen to him, but he said he's fine. He just wanted to know his family was safe. And they're still waiting to hear about the son. And hopefully when this comes out, um, which again, I'll, I'll put up and, and make sure people can see it. Uh, we can get some answers and, and figure it out. Cause it's, I mean, it's crazy, man. Like the, it, he was in prison. He was taken to a Russian prison. He's a civilian. Like he's a civilian. The guy's 58 yeah. years old, right? Nice. He wasn't fighting. He was at home helping deliver food and helping treat people. Like he's a civilian. They accused him of directing artillery, but like, there's no way he was doing that. And uh, his son's a civilian too. And um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty heavy. So hopefully that will get out there this week and you guys can, uh, can read about it because it's a, it's a pretty harrowing piece. Yeah. Yeah, it is. There's some heartbreaking details in there. It's a tough one, but uh, some amazing reporting. So if you're listening, like, please do check that out. Uh, I think loads of folks have asked more about our journalism and we've both been insanely busy with loads of stuff. So we'll have more of this kind coming up on the Patreon, hopefully. Uh, are you up to much now, other than smoking mobile reds? Yeah, writing all night, but yeah, thank you guys. Sorry this this episode is kind of unorthodox uh, in the way it's done, but um, you know, people always tell us, I think, especially on the Patreon, and those are the people that we care about the most, that uh, they want to hear what we're up to and what we're getting into, even if it's not specifically re related to organized crime. So, um, yeah. Ah, did the line go dead? Uh Maybe I lost you there. This is like proper war zone reporting, guys. Equipment trouble. Wait, are you back? I think I can hear you. Uh, yeah, anyway, like I hope this is the kind of thing that is interesting to everyone listening to this. Um, yeah, what do you reckon? Yeah, hopefully it is. Anyway, uh, I'll let you get on with it and, and give them an explanation of what they're about to hear because I think it's pretty cool. All right, man. I will do that. Just that. Uh, take care and stay safe. Later, guys.